For many, America is New York, San Francisco, and Hollywood. Today, we have come to the real America, the city of Bruton in Alabama. It's among those towns in the South that brought Trump to power. Here, you will see a completely different America, something that you can't see in movies. The most important values here are church and family, with many generations living next door to their parents and grandparents up to the end of their lives. This video is my attempt to discover an America that is different from what you are used to seeing. Watch and discover for yourself. One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Where your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Yeah, your heart. If you want to learn about the history of this city with just one picture, you can view this mural depicting Bruton citizens working hard. They are cutting wood to earn money. The city's population is only four and a half thousand. Its peak came in the 1960s and 70s, when many Americans moved here from other states. What do its inhabitants do? How do they make money? Well, there is a big paper mill here. As Bruton, Alabama is the center of forestry industry. Now we are in the very center, or downtown, of Bruton. It looks deserted and empty. There are lots of shops here that are for sale or rent because the businesses could not compete with such giants as Walmart. When Walmart came here five or six years ago, it killed local business. This is how real America lives. We spent Independence Day with a family in Alabama. They're our friends. Their parents are 82 years old. They have four sons. All are alive and they are a big family. They have lots of family traditions and their own history. I will show you the unique traditions that I have seen here in Alabama that are part of the real America. A lot of the old families, they would have family Bibles that would be passed down through the generations. And what it would do inside the Bible, it would list a family registry. Uh, this was my grandfather and grandmother's family Bible. Mr. William Basil Richburg and Miss Lula Mae Finley. And they was married April 6, 1934. And when you flip the pages, it lists their family, grandparents, his father, and it would go down and list the children, their, birth, their anniversaries, wedding anniversaries, who they married. And this is the way a lot of the families kept uh, a registry of, of their history, of their generations of the family and passed it down. This newspaper here is the Mobile Press Register. It's dated Tuesday, August the 14th, 1945. This announced the war between the U.S. and Japan when it ended. This is the original newspaper uh, saved by my grandfather who worked at the shipyard in Mobile. And he gave this paper uh, to his son, my father, and we've had it ever since. This is if I wanna try to love it anymore. I want to show you how the rooms of the four sons look. They're in their 60s now, and they grew up in Alabama. Here is one of the rooms that their parents keep exactly as it looked many years ago. There are weapons and pictures taken from their army service, their shoulder board, and all those things to show you the real history of America. This is my uncle's uh, uniform 
from Vietnam when he come home. This is just the way he left it. Uh, he was a sergeant in the infantry, the blue cord, and the blue around the disc and the cross rifles indicate infantry. The green tabs here on his shoulder means he was a team leader. He led a team of soldiers. He was in Vietnam from what, 1960, yeah. 68, 67, 68? This is just my gun collection here. Yeah. This is a kind of pride of my collection. It's an 1888 commission rifle, Gewehr 88. Uh, this particular model was made in 1890 in Berlin, Germany. I, I can still shoot this with uh, uh, ammunition, but I only shoot it about once or twice a year, just, just, for, just for fun. And I like to deer hunt, and I use a H&R model slug gun, single shot with a scope, and it's very accurate up to 200 yards. Uh, very heavy, very stable platform to fire with. But I did the camouflage paint job myself. So if anybody's interested, I can do it for $59.99. <laughs>We have found one of the few working shops on the street. Of course, they do not sell milk, sugar, or grains. They sell expensive clothing for local fashionable women. I want to talk to the shop's owner to find out how they could survive when most of the other shops were bankrupted. I'm here in Antigone's, which my wife Donna owns. This is her thing, this is her passion, and she's always doing work on it 24-7. Uh, one of my girls, that's all she does. She's uh, in, into decorating our shop, and uh, that's her passion. And she does our painting, which we have our Annie Sloan paint in the back, which is from England. And we're very proud of our Annie Sloan paint because it's something that it, it's, it's hard to get, but once we get it, everybody loves it. Really proud of our, all our uh, local people from Bruton that make our uh, blueberry jellies. We have, uh, now we, we started some honey that's local. Uh, we have naughty seasoning that's local. A lot of businesses, it's, uh, hadn't had businesses in a while there in these empty stores, but we've got a passion from the mayor, the city council, and they've worked with uh, new businesses to get in here. And I think when you come back in six months to a year, it does, it'll have a different look here. And we're really looking at, at that. One more interesting place that I want to show you is an old bank. There was a safe deposit night mailbox. You could put your correspondence here. And the next morning, the bank would send your checks to the right address. Such places can be found in this area only. 
This is an award that the building was given 40 or 50 years ago for its full electrification. Electric Building Award. There were no other buildings with electricity, just this one. The state of Alabama is very different to Manhattan and San Francisco. In every real American community, there are places where the locals meet. And as a rule, it is church. In Alabama, church plays an important role, like in Texas, Mississippi, and all states and the South. Here, people meet, register their birthdays, get married, share their secrets, and die. You can often see a community cemetery near the church, so every member has their own place to get buried. Today, I have the opportunity to talk to a local pastor who is a member of a big family. Outside of church, he is the CEO of a big company. I want to talk to him to find out how it is possible to serve as a pastor and work as a CEO at the same time. What does real America look like? Church is one of the key answers to this question. There is a balm in Gilead It comes like wisdom it speaks like children It's a sight to the blind And a strength to my weakness it's something for soul, body, mind well, that from me, I, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm in the construction field and I uh, was a tradesman and I've been, been blessed by God to be in now in management. The church that I serve here, that I get the pleasure of serving, um, the people do the work. And so, you know, I mean, I'm, I have the title of this pastor, but the, the work is done by the people. Uh, do I understand why people do full-time ministry and, uh, and don't, don't have another profession? Yes, I do, because I know no bigger than our church is, it gets to be sometimes uh, a load. And so if it were not for the help of these people, I could not have another job. But I think it's been good because our church has, hasn't had to have a full salary pastor, which allowed us to take that money and use it to go in the mission fields and do things here and we're fortunate to be able to do that. To me, the church should have a voice in politics. To me, the church should have a voice in government. The church should have a voice in every avenue because of, of our nation, because that's the way it was founded. So I was a Trump supporter. Uh, did I agree with everything he'd done? No. But the direction he took the country in began to be something I fell in love with. I shared his name this past Sunday and some of the things that he'd done. Not that I was propping him up to be anything other than just a good president, but I think the Bible says we to pray for our president. It said he seats them. The way our nation is presented is oftentimes it's glitz and glamour, all the big stuff and all the, all the, the, the things that sort of draw attention. But I live in South Alabama. We live simple lives. We believe in God. We believe in our nation. We take pride in our nation. And simple people live without having to have all the things that the world says you have to have to be happy and be successful. Nothing's more beautiful about this nation than driving the country roads and seeing the simple people farming and living, people sitting on the porch talking, people gathering in a church and just loving on one another. In our county, in Scambia County, the last time I checked there were 35 Southern Baptist churches. Now that's not including the Pentecostals, the Assembly of God and everything else, so it would be, it'd be a big number, it'd be a big number. Now those churches, you and I had a discussion the other day, a lot of those churches have a different name on the door, but the belief of that church is the difference between it and the one they came from or down the road is micro. Uh, a person does not have an excuse not to go to church uh, in Alabama and most places in this nation.
An important part of Bruton is its community college. This zone is a microcopy of all American big universities. I can see the picture here is similar to what I have seen in Harvard, beautiful architecture. Here, you can study the professions that are essential to every American citizen, even a business administration specialization. Of course, it is not at the same level as Stanford or Harvard. There is the museum and a campus dormitory here to host non-local students and parents who come to visit graduation ceremonies for their kids. There is also a coffee shop here. It is surprising to see such a big community college in a town with four and a half thousand inhabitants. It is very beautiful. I believe that such towns live their own lives and have their own pulse that helps them to survive. If they die, I would not see such a beautiful order here. I wish to see this beauty in Ukrainian towns and their local colleges. Real America is not always so modern and beautiful. Here in Alabama, we have found a historical building constructed in 1911. At that time, both Alabama and the town were booming. The building's owner was a rich landlord who made his fortune owning a lumber company. As you see, there are lots of beautiful fir trees all around. He made his millions on their sales. Everything was good until 1929. What happened in 1929? There was the world financial crisis followed by the Great Depression, and this landlord became bankrupt. There were many legends after that. One of them said that the landlord killed his wife in this building. Another told about the ghosts living here and the voices heard within. They were all fairy tales, of course. Unfortunately, vandals ruined most of the building, and only the foundation has survived. They say there is a new owner for this building who is going to resurrect it. Now, the area is uncared for, and I wanted to show you that the morning sun never lasts a day. On the other hand, it is important to save such buildings to keep our history alive. Bruton is such a small city that is in the size of Ukrainian village. It is interesting that we visited it on the 4th of July, Independence Day of the United States. The fireworks here were as big as in the Ukrainian capital on the Independence Day of Ukraine. Bruton is well maintained with lots of flower beds and it is evident that the town's mayor cares about it. I am also concerned how the city looks because American province is a cared, beautiful place with classic sites and their small size charm. It has nothing to do with American big cities like New York, where all this natural beauty is not available. You